Welcome back to Casual Truck. With me again is Chuck on Casual Truck. Say hello, Chuck. Hello. And today isn't a question so much as a discussion. Chuck, I'm going to explain to you Glaucon's challenge and, well, very loosely explain Glaucon's challenge to you, and then we'll discuss until we get bored and talk about something else. Okay. I've literally never heard of this guy before, so I'm interested. Uh, okay. Fire away. Well, um, I can tell you the why of it later. Basically, Glaucon was Plato's brother. Now, the idea is Glaucon and Socrates are having a conversation, and in this conversation, Glaucon asks about justice, and in ancient Greek, justice was the same as goodness. Okay. Like, justice is the reason that everything that is good is good. So that's what they mean by justice. So, somebody who acts good. So, here's the challenge. Let's say you have two people, one that is wholly good and one that is wholly evil. But the person that is wholly good is treated like he is wholly evil, and the person who is wholly evil is treated like he is wholly good. Okay. This treated, is the, treated by whom? Uh, society. Okay. Let's say they're in a city, and the city abhors... They, they in, they do love justice, but when they look at the evil man, they he, he has tricked them in such a way that he reaps the rewards of being good. And when they see the good man, he reaps the punishments of being evil. So the challenge is, if it is such a case, then what value is there in justice? What value is there in being good if you only reap the rewards externally of being evil. That is Glaucon's challenge. And the entire thing, the entire answer, is an entire book called The Republic. Okay. So we're, we're not going to be answering this question right All right, now that that's said and done, let's talk about chicks, man. No, 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 no. No, I, I will talk about this. All right. Um, I, I think the, the primary thing that comes to issue here is uh, the person who's doing good. Um, why is he doing good? Is he doing it for the rewards that good people get? Well, if he because is... If he, if he is, then he's doing it for the wrong reason. Well, see, that, that, is, that is the point of the question. Um, I forgot who he was, but early on in the book, before Glaucon's challenge was made, there was a myth, which isn't that much of a myth, about a man who has a ring. And when he puts on this ring, the man is, is this farmer, and when he puts on the ring, he becomes invisible. Not only invisible, but immune to all consequences while he is invisible. So the man puts on the ring, no one can see him, and no one can attribute any action he takes to him. So the farmer does what anybody would do. He kills the king and marries the queen. Hmm. Now, he is doing evil not good because there is no repercussions for his action and this thought is led is what led glaucon to his challenge so how do you do the opposite well you have a man who is a good man call him a king if you want to play opposites and no matter what he does people will never see him for the good man that he is. He will never be, um, uh, help me, vocabulary. <laughs> no, he, he basically will never be rewarded. That They will never thank him. There's no gratitude whatsoever for the good things that he does. So why does he do these good things? 
And Glaucon went one step further and said that for his good deeds, the good man is thrown in prison, etc., etc. You know, someone with this level of philosophical intelligence should not make their living driving a truck. I see it more of um, somebody with this level of intelligence is probably because he's got nothing better to do while driving a truck. Fair uh, enough. Kind of like those people um, who are just basically there as kind of security guards and they decide, you know what? I'm going to learn Latin. Because hmm. I got nothing better to I, I have a great respect for the American trucker. Um, I can't speak for European truckers. They might be terrible, but um, some American truckers are really, really great people. Others, not so much. Uh, of course, you know, I worked for almost a year at a giant, one of those mega gas stations. Oh, uh, yeah. The Flying um, J. The Trucker's Paradise. Right. And I met a lot of really great truckers at 2 in the morning. And I met a lot of horrible, horrible human beings. Um, so it, it just depends. The, the problem with trucking in America for foreign viewers is that even though it's a job that requires you to transport 40 tons of precious cargo over thousands of miles, in America, it's not that hard of a job to get, but it pays pretty well. So it attracts a lot of people that you might necessarily not want to be around. Um, which is the really nice way to say the amount of drug use and former convicts in the trucking industry is higher than almost any other industry combined. Huh. But that's okay. Hey, you're reforming, you're trying to make a better life for yourself, cool. But if you're just coasting from place to place, making my life miserable, hiring prostitutes in a parking lot. Yeah. I had that problem so often. That was the worst part of that job, was chasing away... We called them lot lizards. <laughs> I've heard that term before. I didn't know what it meant. Yeah, a lot lizard is a woman of ear repute um, who stalks the parking lots where the truckers park overnight. And, yeah. Um... Yeah. Forget the forget the illegal part. The illegal thing is not what bothers me about it. It's the fact that it's dangerous. It's just so dangerous. Like whenever we chased one of those women off, I I felt bad for them. Oh. Anyway. Well, you know what they say, there ain't no rest for the wicked. Money don't grow on trees. Huh? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I've been playing Borderlands a lot. As this is supposed to be casual trucker, and I just made myself sad. I apologize. No, don't be sad. Oh, that's okay. the that's the thing about prostitution. It is only, and there's a really good web comic called Leftover Soup. If you've never read it, leftoversoup.com is really good, but they discussed this topic a while back. And basically, prostitution isn't illegal because it's wrong, quote-unquote. Prostitution is illegal because of the causality of it. Um, you know, we people aren't chasing prostitutes off the street because they're trying to make a living wage. Um, people are chasing them off the street because 99 times out of 100, there's drugs involved, and violence involved, and pimping involved, and it's just the causality of it is different. Well, yeah, and that, that could be a chicken and the egg uh, situation, though. Kind of like how the uh, nothing helps the drug industry more than the war on drugs. Yeah. Uh, I think probably prostitution would be a safer occupation if we legalized and regulated it. And then it would probably be about as dangerous as construction work. I I agree with that. I mean, look look at some of the European places where, you know, 
the prostitute doesn't find you in a back alley in your car with all of your knife collection. Like, you go to the prostitute's brothel, and there's employees there, and there's security there, and it's safe. And, you know, anyway. Yeah, that's, that's the way it used to be in America. Before yeah. it, things got organized. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And also, America has kind of this history of... and. Yeah, this America has this long history of the religious right coming in and fucking everything up for everyone. Well, that's that's a whole other kettle of fish. Yeah, I know. We're, but it's, we're not going to get into religion today. But I honestly think it's that group of, of person, the, the loud minority that tends to screw up things and le- illegalize things. And then they rationalize it by saying, well, prostitution is a dangerous is a dangerous occupation. Here's the thing, though. It really is. But the reason it's so dangerous is because of the laws that make it illegal. And and that goes back to what you were saying about the war on drugs. Yeah, that's, that's again, that chicken and the egg kind of situation. Did did we just agree on something? We do that often, dude. You you just never notice it whenever we do. (laughs) Oh. Huh. Well, now I'm even more... You should call this Sad Trucker. Sad Trucker. I have found the episode's title. Uh, in this game, speaking of which, uh, I'm, I'm, I pay attention to game design when I can. I love extra credits. And I have found that the game design for this game actually encourages you to drive like a reasonable human being. It's, okay. It's really bizarre. I, I'm still getting over it. Uh, for well, example, if the, goal is, if the goal is realism, then that makes sense. Yeah, I guess so. I use my blinkers unconsciously now in this game. <laughs> I, I'll run a red light because they all—they don't put points in my uh, license. They just charge me money, which I make more of on the trip to running the red light. But your your blinkers are kind of important. Um, the AI responds to your blinkers. So when you have to get over and the AI sees your blinkers are on, the AI moves out of the way. Which is good, because if they don't, you'll crash into them, and that costs you lots of money in repairs or worse, cargo damage. It's fairly interesting to me that that they've designed this game. They didn't slap it together. They, They designed it with purpose. Well, I, I didn't think that they built Euro Truck Simulator 2 on accident. Not on accident, but there are plenty of simulation games that are crap. Like this guy was playing Candy Crush on his cell phone and he tripped and fell on it and created Euro Truck? That is one complicated fall, man. <laughs> whoa, 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 falls. Phone turns into giant laptop. Actually, you know, he could have accidentally opened up the programming app that he accidentally downloaded. He must have been falling for, like, hours and hours. And I don't mean, like, falling, but I mean, like, hitting the ground and trying to catch himself with his fingers on his phone over and over again. Well, he, he was falling down an escalator, so... You know what? I think he fell down in a, uh, in, in like, a programming facility where they program stuff. That's, that's where programming happens, right? Maybe so. Yeah. Or maybe he was texting while driving his Euro truck. Ooh. And he, and he crashed, just, and that's what he got. He unconsciously crashed his truck and, and therefore subconsciously programmed Euro Truck Simulator 2. Graphics and all. It's one man. I'm going to check the credits. It's just going to be one man. <laughs> Paul. In a body cast, of yeah. course. Paul, yeah. on accident. This... <laughs> <laughs> This game in memory of Paul. (laughs) 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 And of course, at the end, they they have... uh, Games will have, like, production cats. Cats that you have during production. (laughs) And it'll show, like, Paul had 20 cats, which explains how he crashed. He had 20 cats in the cab of his truck. I don't know why I'm going this far with this explanation. Hey. Ah, I lost him again. So, 
Skype tries to pick him up again. You're back! Yeah, stupid Skype. Can't tell if it's you or me, because my internet's been... It's not me. <laughs> oh. So. There you go. Let me guess, Comcast? What? I don't know. It's not me. No. That's what I... It's not me. Okay, gotcha. What What do you think I say? Oh, uh, I thought uh, it's not meat. <laughs> yes, Mike, it's not meat. It's, it's definitely not meat. I did try once to barbecue my Wi-Fi, and <laughs> it was awful. The sauce was everywhere. <laughs> All I can say, man, melted plastic does not taste good. I've tried. It's not meat. It's no, it's not, not meat. meat. <laughs> oh, God. How so I... what else do we talk about? Let's see here. Well, we can still go back to Glaucon's challenge. Mm, I suppose. I don't know. I'm See, being a former minister, um, goodness for goodness sake is kind of a big issue with me. So that's not a very challenging thing. Like, as, as far as I'm concerned, if I did the right thing, and because of it, I was homeless and alone, that's like the model Christian thing. I mean, you be happy that you're homeless and alone because you did the right thing. So. Yeah, that, that leads into a discussion that I honestly don't want to get into right now. Yeah. But it is... It, it's a... It's one of the first questions is the thing. The challenge was so ingenious to me when I read it. Now, what's... What was sad about the book, The Republic, is there were things happening in the book, because it is all it is is it's Socrates, Glaucon, and some third guy whose name I can't remember, because he was never important. Anyway, Joe. and they're and they're having his this. Name is Joe. Yeah, his name is Joe. <laughs> Socrates, Glaucon, Steve. <laughs> well they're having this conversation the entire time, and Socrates says some things that I'm just like I know you mean well, but that is the stupidest thing I've ever heard of. And the only reason it's stupid is because you have not experienced the repercussions of a similar situation. And what it was that was stupid was there's a point where Socrates is setting up the model city, like the perfect city. It is the most moral city that Socrates could come up with. But, and you'll, you'll recognize the problem here, part of setting up this city was setting up three tiers of classes and lying to one of them. Or was it two? One of the two classes, though. And the lie was for the sake of kind of instilling a sense of morality. But I'm thinking, you know, these kids are going to be hanging out together. And they're going to talk to each other. And that right there is your problem, Mr. Socrates. Anyway. So I, I read that, and it just kind of broke my heart, because for me, Socrates and Plato, they were the bosses. They, they were the people who were like, all right, father of modern philosophy and his disciple, let's rock. And then I read it, and I'm like, oh, never meet your heroes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you have to put it in context of the society they were in. I mean, they only knew the classist system. So, well, anyway, I won't. I won't try to defend the dead people. I'm sorry you were disappointed. Eh. Eh. Stuff happens. Sad trucker. Sad trucker. That is today's episode is sad trucker, and we're nearing the end too because I'm about to make my delivery and call it good. Ah. Uh.
Just got my giant paycheck today. Too bad half of it's going to alimony. Wah, wah. Sad trucker. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> what did you say the question should be earlier about gay abortion? I oh, you asked me for a non-controversial, a non-controversial topic to discuss at the beginning of the video, so I said we should discuss legalizing gay abortions. Now, I know, I, I don't, well, I know you meant it as a joke, but thinking back on it, how would that happen? Let's well, say, because I think of two men, I know there's two women as a possibility and one of them can get impregnated artificially or through other means. And, uh, you know, the, the two women, I could see that as kind of a controversy, but the two men? Is that an issue? <laughs> mm, I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe I typed that wrong. Maybe I meant to say legalize gay marijuana. Oh, man, I hate gay marijuana. On that bombshell, it's time to end the show. <laughs> so, uh, wow. <clears throat> Interesting. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Welcome to Casual Trucker. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Next everybody. week, uh, Canada. <laughs> you, you know, nobody promised you raindrops and lollipops, people. Okay, this was real talk. Yeah, I beg your pardon. I never promised you a rose garden. <laughs> the, the realest of talks. Say goodbye, Chuck. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Sad trucker. Sad trucker. Hey, thanks for watching. Do you have Skype? Do you want to be on the show? Send a message to natchevil at gmail.com and maybe we can work out some time where we can record. You can talk to me about philosophy or whatever while we're driving around fake Europe. Yeah, I know, it seems kind of silly when I put it like that. Also, if you have a screen capture of a really silly or ridiculous crash, I'm going to just start collecting those for Euro Truck Simulator 2 and use those for the opening. I guess I'll see you next time.